This American state is way more powerful than most people realize. Stretching from the Mexican border along the Pacific Ocean for 900 miles, this western U.S. state is home to around 40 million people. Despite making only 4.3% of the total U.S. land area, it's the most populous state and contributes 14.3% of the total GDP. All of this points to just one conclusion. California is one of the strongest states. But how did it rise to such power? Just how much sway does it have in stuff like elections and major legislative decisions? And what is next for California? This is the story of a state that's strong enough to be compared to some of the best developed countries in the world. This is the story of California. In any discussion about California, we first need to talk about its history. Before the first European explorers arrived, California was a great place with around 300,000 people from various cultures. Although the first Europeans came to California in the 1500s, it wasn't until Junipero Serra that people would realize its true value. In 1769, Junipero established the first mission in San Diego. There he taught the local people about Christianity and some modern farming techniques. The next big thing to happen was Mexico becoming free of Spanish rule in 1821. This caused a lot of changes in California. During this period, some of the northwest part of California became a part of the United States, while the rest belonged to Mexico. But after the war between US and Mexico, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed, and California formally became a part of the United States. And of course, how can we talk about California history without mentioning the gold rush? The story goes that in 1848, a carpenter named James Marshall saw shiny objects in the river while he was working for a man named John Sutter. Upon further examination, it was discovered that the shiny bits were gold. And despite Sutter trying to keep it a secret, the news spread rapidly. As a result, people flooded into the state trying to make a fortune. And this rush of people would lead to a period of high growth in California, as these people needed housing, tools, and food, among other things. And that sets the stage perfectly for how California turned into one of the most modern states. There were lots of fields where California saw great progress, but here I'll only be mentioning some of the more major ones. Obviously, the first thing that we have to consider here is Silicon Valley. It has truly been one of the driving forces behind the digital revolution, and it has a reputation of being the hub where the coolest new ideas and technologies are made. To give you an idea of just how big Silicon Valley is, Apple's first headquarters were built there. So, Silicon Valley and California are both at the forefront in terms of cutting-edge technology. But California didn't just change in terms of technology, it also had a big impact on how we think. Just look at the fact that Hollywood is situated in California. Today, movies like Oppenheimer and Barbie are seen worldwide. They affect how we think, how we see the world around us. These movies also become a crucial part of internet culture and are discussed by people online. It's one of the biggest hubs of entertainment in the world. But okay, you get it. California has a lot of good things. I mean, I haven't even talked about the strong trade sector in California. But what really makes California different from all the other states? Just why is it so strong? If I had to answer that question in just one word, then that word would be GDP. Well, okay, that's three words, but you get the point. GDP, or gross domestic product, is essentially the total value of goods and services being produced in a particular region. It's a very good indicator of how developed and economically strong a region is. California's GDP is a staggering $3.6 trillion. To give you an idea of just how huge that number is, if California was a country, then it would be the fifth largest GDP in the world. California's GDP is better than the United Kingdom and India, two countries that are considered as superpowers. And the secret to this high GDP is pretty obvious. I've already mentioned the huge market that is Silicon Valley. With such a high concentration of wealthy people and good ideas, California can make some of the best tech in the world and then sell it for huge revenue. And there's also Hollywood, which is another collection of incredibly wealthy people. Both of these combined help a lot in bringing up the Californian GDP. But that's not all. If we talk about agriculture, then California comes out at the top of all the US states. Its unique geography and dry Mediterranean climate create great growing opportunities over the year. The state's rich soil also supports over 400 commodities, from fruits like apricots and kiwi to nuts such as almonds, pistachios, and walnuts. A third of all vegetables and nearly three quarters of all fruits and nuts that are produced in America come from California. And with all that wealth comes the strength to support it all. The military presence in California is just huge. 
It has the largest combination of operational bases, training space, and support activities. There is a huge number of active duty service members. The state also has some major military installations like the Marine Corps Air Station and the Marine Corps Base. Just to bring numbers into the debate, as of 2000, California had over 2.5 million veterans, out of which 500,000 served in World War II and 750,000 served in the Vietnam War. It has 117,000 active duty service members and over 50,000 reserve members combined in the Army, Marines, and Air Force. So the point is, California has a lot of military power. And this is where we come to the twist. Most US states hate California. I mean, from the outside, this just does not make sense. But multiple polls over the years have shown that California is consistently hated by other states. Though if you look deep enough, you start seeing reasons why it is so hated. Firstly, the cost. I've just talked so much about how much wealth is concentrated in California. What that means is that the price of everything is high, because most people there can afford it. But if someone wants to move to California, well, they just can't. Most of the population just can't afford living in California and still have a lot of financial security. With the high rent, high price of groceries, high price of everything, you just can't save a lot of money. A lot of people also hate California for the fallout of this high pricing. A lot of people end up moving from California to other states nearby. This makes it tough on the other states as they have to deal with immigration. And since these Californians are also wealthier, they can buy homes at higher prices. This causes the cost of housing to increase as the sellers try and mark up the price to maximize their profit. And all of that together creates a really bad situation for the natives of the state as they stop being able to afford their own home. And the last major point against California is that a lot of people just don't like Californians. They have a reputation for being smug and self-centered. Although a lot of it is just stereotypes, it does cause people to like Californian people less. And I mean, who wouldn't be jealous of the rich kid? All of it together leads to Californians being frowned upon by many of the other states. And that's that. California's development and power in the world is because of its huge economy, big tech giants, agriculture, and other involved factors. These factors have made California so geopolitically strong in the world that it's hard to call it a state now. The luxurious lifestyle and growing technology have made California a torchbearer to guide the world in creating modern lifestyle and great technology for future generations. But that comes at the cost of not having the best relations with a lot of the other states. Even so, as time goes on, California will just continue to grow. And maybe one day, it'll finally fix its prices and become the best state in America. With that, I leave you. If you enjoyed this video, then I hope you'll consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching.